Hello everybody and welcome here to St Mary's Battersea for this brief commemoration of VE Day. In these days of continued lockdown, any plans that we had in the borough and further afield to mark this with rejoicing has had to be changed. And so I'm prepared this brief act of commemoration for us to share with you uh, so that we can mark this moment in our national life. Thank you for joining me today and please feel free to join in as you wish to. Dear friends, we have come together on this day to commemorate the 75th anniversary of victory in Europe, when the sounds of war fell silent on this continent. We come together conscious of our need for God's forgiveness for the sin and the desire to dominate that leads to conflict between peoples and war between nations. As we remember the many soldiers, sailors and airmen who gave their lives restraining evil and opposing tyranny, so we also come in thanksgiving for the years of peace that the nations of Europe have enjoyed since the Second World War. We gather with joy today as those who gathered on that first victory, gather glad of each other's company and grateful for the laughter and love which follows times of sadness and loss. But above all things, let us pray that God's will may be done on earth as it is in heaven, as we join our voices together and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Some words from the prophet Micah. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of mountains, and shall be raised up above the hills. Peoples shall stream to it, and many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between peoples, and arbitrate between strong nations far away. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. But they shall all sit under their own vines and under their own fig trees, and no one shall make them afraid. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. There were, of course, many street parties and celebrations on the first VE Day. But among those who were celebrating, there were those who had also seen what war had done. Many soldiers and sailors and airmen who had returned from conflict brought with them those memories of what they had seen. And in my reading uh, around the Second World War, which I've been doing quite a bit of this year, it's clear that many of the things that men witnessed on the front line, they never spoke about. But what perhaps more uh, they came back with after that famous brief period of rejoicing, which Churchill encouraged, was a determination to build a better world. That what they had experienced and the sacrifices that they had made would be profited from in the life that they would live after the war. And one thing, just very obviously today, uh, as we experience our own much less challenging hardship, is the fact that as the war came to an end, plans were being put in place for social improvement, visions were offered for a future of welfare and care, and we saw the birth shortly after the war of the National Health Service upon whom we are all relying today. 
So in many ways, one of the outcomes of the Second World War is the health service we all enjoy today. So as we can be thankful for the men and women who served in the Second World War and continue to remember them, so also we can thankful, be thankful for the legacy that they achieved, which we continue to enjoy today. I'm going to lead us in a couple of prayers now. Feel free to join in if you'd like. O Lord our God, as we remember, teach us the ways of peace. As we treasure memories, teach us hope. As we give thanks for the sacrifices of the past, help us to make your future in this world until your kingdom come. Amen. And a prayer for peace. Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed, kindle in the hearts of all people the true love of peace and guide with your pure and peaceable wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your kingdom may go forward till the earth is filled with the knowledge of thy love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we uh, mark this VE Day, so we're invited to pledge ourselves uh, to commit to a better world going forward. Many of us are wondering how we can, uh, how we can do better after this period that we're going through. One thing is clear about that. It will take intention and commitment and willpower. So let us pledge again to our new, the service of God and our fellow men and women, that we may help, encourage and comfort others and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of the nations. Lord God, our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind in the cause of peace for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit. Give us wisdom, give us courage, and give us hope. And keep us faithful, now and always. Amen. So a blessing. God, grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the Church, the Queen, the Commonwealth, and to all people, peace and concord. And to us and all his servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>